Hi guys, welcome to Monitoring and Evaluation Made Simple. I'm so glad that you have come. I'm your host, Coach Alexander. We're doing an M&D plan seven part series. And last time we're talking about the program goals and objectives. Today we're going to be talking about defining indicators. Now, well, defining indicators is the second step to developing an M&D plan, all right? So now let's understand what we mean when we say we need to define the indicators. Okay, so indicators are basically those variables that provide a means to measure change, all right? So imagine, for instance, you say that you want to be rich, okay? You want to be a rich person. So now how are you going to measure that you are rich? The indicators that you use are probably things like amount of income earned per month, or it could be amount of assets that you have, because those are indicators that tell the world and even yourself that you have reached a certain level of prestige, that is being rich. So, a good example of indicators is um, the indicators that are put on the World Bank website. Maybe you may not know this, but World Bank has a lot of indicators that they measure around the world. And I'm going to show you the website just after I finish these slides. Okay, so now one of the biggest mistakes that people around the world make when defining indicators is that they are poorly defined. And that presents problems even when trying to measure whether indeed there is change going on or not. For instance, like remember those goals which we talked about in part one. Like let's say your goal is that you want to build a house after five years, okay? You definitely need indicators to measure whether you have achieved your goals. But sometimes indicators can be poorly defined such that you may not even know whether you have achieved the goal that you really intended to achieve. Okay, so let's go to this next slide. It's important for this reason that all indicators must be smart. Okay, and if you're seeing this for the first time, well, smart simply means being specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time based. Let me explain what all these terms mean. When we talk of an indicator being specific, what we are simply saying is that when you read an indicator, you should instantly know that this is the meaning behind this word of the indicator. So let's say your indicator is agriculture production. Okay, you are a farmer, and you have an indicator called agricultural productivity. Okay, so now the issue is that agriculture production is a good indicator to measure whether you have enough yield of your crop. But is it specific? Does it mention what crops you are growing? Does it mention the actual cages you'll be collecting? The answer is no. So in order to make your indicator specific, you need to clarify what you mean by agricultural production. Is it cages per hectare? Is it only cages? And is it it's for which crop? Okay. All those things need to be clarified. And then maybe back to the example of building a house. Maybe you may say, you want to build a house after five years, okay? But that house, as an indicator, can be a little weak because the whole idea is that at the end of the five years, what type of house would you want to have? Because there are different houses out there. Hmm? So you need to specify. You need to say, okay, 
at the end of the five, uh, five years, I want to have a three-bedroomed house because a house could be just any house. It can just be a house without any fittings, without any windows, and that is the house, but it may not be the house you want. So to have an indicator that's specific, you need to say, I need to have a three-bedroomed house with these fittings and this, uh, these finishings, okay? So that's when you're being specific. And also, an indicator should be measurable, all right? It's important that when you are defining indicators, indicators should be easy to measure. Take, for instance, if you want to measure whether uh, you want to measure whether you are rich, okay? You obviously go to how much income you are earning per month. That's the best way to measure whether you are rich. But is it easy to measure somebody's emotions? Is it easy to measure someone how happy somebody is? It's not easy, okay? Level of happiness of an individual. Because in emotions of an individual are different. It's difficult to quantify those things, okay? So it's hard to measure whether someone is happy or sad. And if you put that as an indicator in your program, it becomes really difficult to, to measure. It should also be attainable, okay? Meaning that within the given time frame, your indicator should be able to, it should be, it should be easily achieved within the given time frame, okay? We shouldn't be overly ambitious. We shouldn't come up with a goal which says to remove poverty to 0% all over the world. That is really unrealistic. You can't remove poverty to 0%, okay? But you can reduce it to a certain level. And which brings me to the next point. It needs to be realistic. You know, when defining indicators, you need to be real, you see? And... When we say realistic, we are simply saying, how is it something that is relevant? Okay. Is it something that we should actually be measuring? Are we taking too much of our time trying to capture this information? Time-based mentions also the time. You know, every project has a time frame. So should these indicators demonstrate uh, that time frame, you see, that time period, it should be de well, well demonstrated. So when you follow these, these principles of SMART, you'll see that life becomes so easy when you are measuring progress. And even when you put these indicators into your M&D plan, Let's say you develop an M&D plan for your organization and you find a new job somewhere. The next person who will find the M&D plan will find it easy to understand, okay? So now let's go to the World Bank indicators. I want to show you something there, okay? Let's quickly go to the World Bank indicators. Okay, so I'm here on the World Bank website. As you can see, the World Bank has so many indicators that they are measuring. And usually, if you are new to the indicator development, you can actually go to the World Bank website and get an understanding of how they develop their indicators. All right? So, for instance, we've got so many different indicators here. Some of the indicators deal with agriculture. We've got indicators dealing with aid effectiveness, climate change economy and growth, all these indicators, education. So now, if you're developing a program, sometimes, like if it's a program on agriculture, you can go to the World Bank website just to find out how they do their indicators. It can help you even in the development of your programs. So let's go to one of their indicators. Let's say we want to see employment in agriculture. So we click there, okay? So now it will show you, okay, it will show you 
how this indicator has been measured over the years, okay? It will even disaggregate by a country, okay? But our area of interest maybe could be how this thing is arrived at, okay? Maybe let's go to details. Okay, so here, if you go to details, they actually tell you employment in agriculture, female percentage of female in employment. Employment is defined as persons of working nature who are engaged in any activity to produce goods or provide services for pay or profit, okay? So they define, they tell you how this is calculated and the aggregation method is weighted average. And I mean, it, you don't really need to dig much because it's clear. They are simply saying the percentage of female in employment, but in agriculture. So have you seen that this indicator is actually specific? You don't just say employment, percentage of employment worldwide. You know, here they are being specific and they're saying it's actually in the agriculture. And they're saying it's for the female, percentage of female in employment. So that is how they are following the principles of having smart indicators, okay? So now, I would urge you to go to this World Bank website. I have the link in the description. So like I mentioned earlier on, I want to show you something else, a course that is being run on Udemy, which I would want you to enroll in, okay? And just give me a minute, let me show you right now. Okay, so I'm on the Udemy website, okay? I'm on the Udemy website. I, for those of you who don't know what Udemy is, it's an online training platform. It's a very good place to be. A lot of people come here to get good training online and for very cheap. So I wanted to show you the key performance indicator course that I'm running. Okay, so it's a very good course, guys. I would urge you to enroll in it. It's here, run by Coach Alexander. So far, it has received high reviews, 4.8 reviews. So this course is quite affordable, all right? You won't see most of these courses which are being run online are quite expensive. But here on Udemy, you get the best it's for the beginner level it tells you exactly how key performance indicators are developed so i'd urge you to enroll in this course it's a good course and i think you you derive the maximum benefit from enrolling here okay so that's about all for now and i sure hope We'll meet again for the next part of this series in the M&D plan development. I've been your host, Coach Alexander, and see you on the 